Happy New Year. I hope you all had a good holiday. So I've represented small businesses and businesses in general for over 35 years. There is a common thread of mistakes that are, that are made, uh, even though I've educated businesses on this and I'm going to be doing some seminars on this this year. This message is for those of you who are in business already and for those of you who intend to go into business. Let's talk about some pretty common mistakes. First of all, most people want to be their own boss. Uh, it's somewhat in human nature, but we need all sides. We need those people. We need soldiers who are competent to work with business owners like myself, and we need, the, we need those who are entrepreneurial. Not one is any better than the other, so it doesn't matter what walk of life you get into. But at some point, some people say, you know, particularly after they may retire, I've always wanted to go into this business. So one of the most common mistakes people make is they go into a business they really don't know enough about to even begin to make it a success. In other words, the emotion of being in business is so dramatic and such a fulfilling thought that they don't look past the emotion and get really good advice on the success of that type of business, the competition of that type of business, the cost of that type of business. The, the ones that have failed, the ones that have made it, you just saw recently one of the largest chains in the country is closing over a thousand stores. Going in business for yourself requires an enormous amount of due diligence if you want to be successful. Number two, most people who start out in business are undercapitalized. They don't have enough money for rainy day or for the first six months to a year so that it's going to take time to promote your business. It's going to take marketing, advertising, all these different ways to promote your business, to make your stand out as opposed to the one right down the street. The other thing is they don't get the proper legal advice. They don't really stand up and say, well, what kind of entity should I be? Should I be a sole proprietor? Should I be a limited liability company? Should I be an S corporation? Should I be a C corporation? If you have a partner, should we have a partnership or a joint venture agreement? These type of things become important. Can't tell you how many businesses come to me who were started a business a few years ago, uh, did a limited liability company, have uh, a partner, set it up themselves with the Secretary of State, have no operating agreement. What's an operating agreement? It's basically the roadmap to the business, what the responsibilities are. Don't have a tax ID number. Never talk to a CPA. Don't have a banking relationship. These are common things that are not expensive when you're first starting out the business. It's only after the fact that you run into this type of problem. So when I talk about common mistakes, the laundry list could go from here to Los Angeles and back, but common things I want you to think about. Number one, do your due diligence. Make sure you check out the type of business that you're in or you want to go into and make sure that you believe in it enough that you're going to write a check in order to sustain it. That's very important. And what do you need for that? Objective opinions. I'm not the kind of person that would kill anybody's dream. Read about Mrs. Fields. Everybody went and told Mrs. Fields don't ever do it. Well, so much for them. The point of the story is if you get it right from the beginning, your level of success becomes greater. And that's so important in business. Those of us who are in business, what's the biggest problem? Adapting to competition. You know, how do we adapt to the Walmarts and the Costcos that move into the area when you have a pizza joint or you have a hamburger joint or a sandwich joint or flowers, whatever it may be, how do we adapt to that competition? What we've seen in our country is these mega businesses come in and shut everybody down. It's a poor commentary. But that's the way that business is going. People want to go one stop and they want to get it all. They want to buy clothes. They want to buy groceries. They want to be, buy things for their house, the furniture. And needless to say, online competition is through the roof. We saw what happened this year with Christmas. Look at Amazon. I mean, they could get you things in two hours. You know, I mean, it's remarkable what's going on. But no matter what happens, the mom and pop operations still have a place in the United States of America. And you must not be discouraged by them, but you must be smart enough to figure it out before you start the business. And when you're in the business, don't be afraid. I heard a great statement today. I read it and I hope I could remember it. It's something like everything you've ever wanted to find is on the other side of fear. So just think about that. Everything you always wanted to find or know about is on the other side of fear because fear in business 
becomes not only a, dis a distraction, it becomes a deterrent and it takes your dreams away. So understand when you're in business, there's good days and bad days, there's good months, there's bad months. If you're gonna go into business, be aware of these type of things. This is Bob Massey, Facebook Live, our office number 702-870-1100. I'll see you next week. And by the way, look for my son, Robert. He starts his Facebook this Thursday.